13 Love, Ai Bobo, Asasi Morbe, X Relation, Charles Philmon. Uh, this is part two of my interaction with the so called Internal Revenue Service. The reason why I'm putting it on the public record. Uh, shout out to 13 Sun, 13 Love, 13 Respect. Everything is recorded in Library of Congress. NSA, data storage, Google storage records, as well as, let's see here. Essentially, as you can see here, everything you tweet goes into the NSA database, Google database. All right, so basically everything that's put on the public record for the most part is monitored. Now I'm not here. I'm not here to have them pay attention to me. I'm just here to put into the public record that I am who I say I am, and I'm not your taxpayer. I can never be a U.S. citizen by law, and I'm about to get into that. So the last letter, I made my response to a letter that they sent, maybe early 2022. Now this is a letter that they responded back. As you can see, it was sent October 21st, 2022. It was sent by Gardy La Rochelle, Director Return Integrity Verifications Operations. All right, now let's get into it. I'm gonna get straight into this. Dear taxpayer, this is in reply to your correspondence received April 11th, 2022. We have determined that the arguments you raised are frivolous and have no basis in law. Federal courts have consistently ruled against such arguments and imposed significant fines for taking such frivolous positions. If you persist in sending frivolous correspondence, we will not continue to respond to it. Our lack of response does not convey agreement or acceptance of the argument stated. If you desire to comply with the law concerning your tax liability, you are encouraged to seek advice from a reputable tax practitioner or attorney. The claims presented in your correspondence do not relieve you from your legal responsibilities to file federal tax returns and pay taxes. We urge you to honor those legal duties. This letter advises you of the legal requirements for filing and paying federal individual income tax returns and informs you of the potential consequences of the position you have taken. Please observe that the Internal Revenue Code, now listen to this, sections listed below expressly authorize IRS employees that act on behalf of the Secretary of the Treasury. So I'm not going to read the rest of the letter because, in my opinion, it's a bunch of hogwash. They, <laughs> they're calling my letter frivolous, but everything they stated is frivolous. How is it that IRS employees who are hired by a private corporation has nothing to do with the government government has to do with the oath they have to be sworn under oath so that if they violate that oath they can be charged with treason how how where is the liability when they're acting on behalf of the secretary how can then how can that's what that's the question i'm trying to ask how is it employees for a private corporation can act on behalf of a seat of, of a seat of trust in government. How does that work? This is extreme conflict of interest. You see, now it makes me want to go ahead and look up uh, um, the definition, the legal definition of act. That to me is so foul. We're gonna open up Black's Law. Um, 
this is out of the shout out to um house of reawakening mind uh dr g tosh three bay and everybody who contributed which just said is 20 years plus of research so we're going to go to this is black's law dictionary pdf it's free on the um well the flash drive is like 25 bucks there's so much so much information on here might as well just be free because there's just so much for 25 bucks now i'm gonna go to the word act let's see if it's even in, in here okay because i don't understand I, I really don't understand how you can have employees act on behalf of, of government how does that work it doesn't look like we have the word act in here okay yes we do let me just see if it goes further back. Oh, all right, here it is. All right, act. I think this is the only definition. Okay, so we have a verb and we have a noun. Okay, so we're gonna do the verb because the noun is like a, a legislation. The verb is an action <clears throat> and they're doing an action. In Scotch practice, to do or perform judicially, to enter of record surety acted in the books of a journal so they're performing judicial actions but they're not government when did irs become government i'm i'm gonna just get into the letter because this right here this is probably the most extreme level of exposure they literally exposed them Themselves. They they lifted their skirts, so to speak. No pun intended. So let's get into the letter. So I sent this to the acting commissioner, Douglas O'Donnell, of the Internal Revenue Service, who is acting <laughs> on behalf of the Department of Treasury. I'm going to zoom in and show you these uh, symbols, which represents the nation that I descend from. The six point star, Hex Alpha, Moorish flag, star of Yahudim, star of David, star of Solomon. I am an Israelite for the record. This is the Moorish, the Moorish nation. If you can see that, that's the furthest I can zoom in, Ab Antikyo. What does that mean? is Latin. It wants to not load in. the great seal of the Moorish nation. Age. So that's what we got ancient world, ancient Moorish nation. We got so you can see these symbols on the pyramid. They look like some ancient Phoenician, ancient Sumerian. And then you got the eye at the top. Wasn't it in um, uh, Martin Luther King's I had a dream speech. Didn't he mention Muhammad's mountain? Let's get into the letter. So this shout out to 13 Sun for uh, at least this is where I learned it. I learned it from the Ethiopian calendar. Um, I, I I've just adopted that calendar. I know some Moors they use the Moorish calendar. I'm I'm more. I I'm, I resonate more with the Ethiopian calendar. Arab to Hadar, 2015 Ethiopian calendar, 2nd of December, 2022, Gregorian calendar year. The book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 24. You are also to know that you have no authority to impose taxes, tribute, or duty 
on any of the priests, Levites, musicians, gatekeepers, temple servants, or other workers at this house of Yah. All right. And I am a child of Levi out of the house of Yehuda, house of Yasharel. This is my affidavit of fact, legal document, me giving my testimony, putting my truth on paper for the record. And yes, I signed it in red and I stamped it with my thumbprint in red. Now, notice to the agent, it's notice to the principal, notice to the principal, notice to the agent. Um, I got this um, from, how, what is it, uh, rvbaypublications.com. This is to leave them on, on notice that you, you can't say you did not, you cannot, you cannot act like you didn't read it or you wasn't made aware. You know, you can unsee it. It is what it is. I sent courtesy copies to that IRS agent, Gardy La Rochelle, who's acting on behalf <laughs> as an employee acting on behalf of the Secretary of Treasury, Department of Justice, Attorney General Mayor Garland, National Grand Sheik Tosh Tariq Bey, the Archbishop of the Diocese of St. Petersburg, Tampa, Florida, Gregory L. Parks. Why did I send it to him? Because according to uh, Pope Francis' letter to Obama 2014 civil orders, all archbishops, I mean, um, pardon me, all government officials, right, whether they're acting on behalf of government or they are, are starting into government, these are all Roman Curia members. I'll get into that as I elaborate in the letter. You know, I, I domicile in the Tampa Bay, Florida area. Therefore, I put him on notice because all archbishops are appointed by essentially the Pope. I'm not too familiar with the process, but I know they all meet the Pope in some ceremonial manner. So they all are under his authority. So if one of these politicians, which the, the state is owned by the church, there is no separation. When one of these politicians or people acting on behalf of government are getting out of line, violating the Pope's orders, which is their dawn, their God, their ruler, then you got to put one of their administrators on notice. Shout out to Tosh Street. Um, that were actually I learned that from. The, I always credit where credit is due, regardless where I learned it from. International Court of Justice President Joanne Donahue. International Criminal Court Judge Antoine Casilla M.B. Mendua. I apologize if I mispronounce any of these people's names. United Nations official Mr. David Nanopoulos, who is the chief of treaty relations. United Nations official Volker Turk, who is the High Commissioner of Human Rights. All right, let's get into it. It has been established that your agency, IRS, constant attempts to preserve notes, private commercial paper, with harassed letters under the guise of tax notices are clear acts of genocide relative to the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, December 9th, 1948. I learned about that um, United Nations document by Tosh Street Bay and one of his live we can Dr. G. Essentially all these people in government are committing genocide. It, it but you know I'm not gonna elaborate on that. I'm just saying that for the record and I'm gonna give supporting I'm gonna give supporting statements throughout my letter. Article two states as follows. Quote, in the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group as such, end quote. Okay? They're trying to destroy me by a way of extorting me of Federal Reserve notes, private commercial paper. Just me. This is, this is finance that is generated 
by way of my labor not to mention you know the the labor that I perform they are tax they try to rob me from under the guise of taxes which is all against my religion but I'm going to elaborate throughout the course of the letter let the record show that I Asa Seymour Bay X relation Charles Philmon all caps am a religious more American national in proprio persona su juris solo proprio in proper person in one's own right on my own land pause I do not abandon my estate and I am not lost at sea okay lost at sea obviously responding to their admiralty law you know birthing dock with birth certificates and you know stealing the inheritances by way of the marriage marriage licenses and all of that corruption but I don't want to elaborate too much on that because I really just want to read this letter and close out as a child of the living Elohim I qualify for the liquidation of all debt formally attributed to my person Charles film on all caps due to my ancestral tradition custom known as Jubilee year this was established by my ancient Israelite foremothers and forefathers to prevent slavery by allowing indentured servants sharecroppers to invoke their Yah given right to liberty and their pursuit of happiness what does that sound like it sounds a lot like the Declaration of Independence um, let me continue the Internal Revenue Service and speaking on uh, Jubilee year uh, there's a brother um, Big Judah shout out to Big Judah shout out to Big Levi all the Israelite brethren and sister and online and offline Big Judah he hosted an interview with some brother brother who had a Moorish name and he was elaborating on the Jubilee year it was very informative I'll try and find that and put it in the description just to give some perspective to those who may not be familiar to those who are familiar you know you already know what it is the Internal Revenue Service allegedly was founded in 1862 during Abraham Lincoln's administration to raise finance via taxes for the Civil War which there has been no standing treaty to end the war how are you gonna have a civil war but there's no treaty so that means the war is still ongoing as a child of the heavenly mother big ama mama ama varu shout out the 13th son always give credit where credit is due that's where i learned about the word ama mama and then you know i do a little research on the dogon over there in mali originally from kemet and they speak about ama mama referencing the the universe and then Amavaru is um, the mother goddess of Brahma. Brahma is the three-headed or the trinity, father, son, Holy Spirit, or Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, that trinity, or mother, father, son. Well, well the, the, the mother who gives birth to that is Amavaru. So let me, let, me, let me start this over. As a child of the heavenly Brahma Mama, Amavaru, I don't believe in war, nor any other devilish endeavors financed by so-called taxpayers, all of which go against my religion and is discriminating against my religion. Another clear attempt of genocide against me. All of the finance that they raised via taxes is all discriminatory against my religion because it's all rooted in genocide against not only me but those who choose to be set apart aka a revelations 18 verse 4 the internal revenue service currently acting as the constitutionally sanctioned department of treasury displays insurmountable levels of corruption conflict of interest that is tied to a lot of the devil's children's work in the last century or so such as Woodrow Wilson selling the United States Corporation and the collateral bottomry instruments backing the treasury bonds of U.S. citizens' marriage licenses, 
birth certificates, etc., off to Jesuit banking cartels, founders of the Federal Reserve at Jekyll's Island in 1913. Let's pause for a second. First of all, we, there's a couple things we need to clarify. One of which is Pope's letter to Obama. We, I, I've read this already in my last letter, not the whole thing, but I mean, in my, in my last video, right? Uh, there we go, put this up. This is very important to just be made aware of, okay? So this is Pope's letter to Obama. Okay. It was written by I'll tell you just a minute. Uh acting attorney or private attorney rather in service to his holiness Pope Francis. Her name is Anna Maria Wilh Wil Wilhelmina Hannah Sophia Reisinger dash von Reisenstein von Leto Verbeck. Okay, you can go ahead and Google her, YouTube her. She's legit. I've she's one of those patriot people. Um, anyway, so in this letter, this exposes a lot of the corruption now peep this right check this out for those who are not familiar who those who know you already know what it is all right this is how messed up this system is we know that the current circumstance is in part the result of criminal acts engaged in 150 years ago uh, 1862 that sounds right ar right around the time of 150 years ago IRS when it's when it was allegedly founded which resulted in the commercial enslavement of African Americans we know there's no such thing as African Americans African American is a term that was coined by Jesse Jackson in the 1980s so how can you take something that was that was constructed in the 1980s and bring it retroactive 150 years ago it doesn't exist 150 years ago, the people who you're calling African Americans were misnomered as Negro and coloreds. However, that's not who they were. They were the Aboriginal copper colored natives to, to the land. And for those, again, for clarification purposes, um, go ahead and open up a dictionary. Again, this is on the flash drive. Wow, they got the 1828 dictionary. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, this is Webster's. Uh, all right, the flash drive, House of Awakening Minds, Dr. G. Go ahead, haul at her. All right. Here you go, Noah Webster. Uh, let's see if we can find the um try to zoom into that zoom in yep 1828 you see that ain't gotta lie about it now let's go to the word american oh i went too far Scroll all the way up to AM. We are in AP. Where you are? Where you at? Where you at? Oops. There we go. Closer. This is very important. Here we are. We are at America and we're at American. Are you ready? American. Notice how there's an apostrophe separating Amer, Amer, and Akin, because it's really Amaru Khan. Love story. I'll just leave that at that. Noun. 
person, place, or thing, or people, or an idea. In this case, it's a, it's a, it's a people. A native of America originally applied to the aboriginal or copper-colored races. That's it. There's nothing else that needs to be said. An American is the copper colored races. Do we need to even demonstrate what is copper colored? I don't think so. Go examine pennies that were minted, US pennies that were minted before 1982. Those have over 90% copper. And there's a variety of dark to light to in the middle. So that's who the Americans are. Internal Revenue Service, which they already know. Now, let's get back to the letter. Uh, the Pope Francis, so, and then we'll finish up the letter. We know that, this, that the cur current circumstance is in part the result of criminal acts engaged in 150 years ago, which resulted in the commercial enslavement of African Americans who were summarily claimed. What is that? And we, we have to rip and they don't look at us as just people. But I don't wanna, cause I can really go on a, go on a tangent and just digress. So chattels, if not my, if I'm not mistaken, shout out to Joe Fullerton or or the Fullerton informer, Joe over there in California. I mentioned this chattels, one of those patriot people. This is French for cat. <laughs> Do I need to even elaborate? Claimed as chattels back in quote unquote US government debt in the wake of the civil war. So that means your stock was flitted off the backs of those of African descent. Anyway, let me they continue. Despite every act of abolition and declaration of prohibition against both peonage and slavery, it has citizens to be among nations of the world instead of freeing african americans the sum total result of the civil war was to vastly expand public sector ownership of slaves giving rise to the outrageous and improper claims that have been made against the american states and the american state citizens that we are dealing with today i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna finish your whole government was set up off of the birthright being stolen by who by the Americans okay this whole system is all about the true Americans birthright being stolen the true Americans are the copper colored races who they're calling African Americans and so called people of color color is a fiction do we have to open up a legal dictionary let's do it for the record why not why not? Do we already have it already up? Yes, we do. Uh, uh, do we? No, we don't. I think I closed it. So let's open it back up, shall we? I'm going to open up the Black's Law Dictionary and I'm going to go with definition of color. And I'm not going to read the entire thing. I'm just going to just read a brief sentence. We already did have it up. I thought this was something else. All right, so we're going to go to color. Okay. It's, it's just, there's such a fraud, you know, all of them. Internal Revenue Service, all of these fake government, they're just frauds, man. And they think that they can bully you into complying when they're a complete fraud. They've always been a fraud. It's not like, oh, 2022, everything's so corrupt. How did we get here? It, because it was born in fraud. <laughs> but I'm not even going to act like I know. I just know what I know right now. And I know for damn sure that they are fraud. 
that's for sure. All right, so we're going to colored. We're at CL, we need to go to CO. COG, let's go to COL. Here we are, we're at COL. Uh -huh. Getting warmer, getting warmer. Here we are, color. Okay, we have vari a variation, color of authority, color of law, color of office. We're just gonna go to regular color. What is color in, in, in a legal context? Color, an appearance, semblance, or simulacrum as distinguished from that which is real. <laughs> oh shit. A prima facie or apparent right, hence a deceptive appearance, a plausible assumed exterior. That sounds like a front. Concealing a lack of reality. I'm done. A disguised or pretext. That's what they are. They're pretending to be government, but they're not. Let's continue. Franklin Theodore Roosevelt followed up with the Emergency Banking Act in 1933 after suspending the gold standard. Do you know, do you, do you know how much corruption happened within the last hundred years? Which is why we're experiencing all the crap we're experiencing today and everyone who talks about the economy and this and that it's like you can't just speak on this and then forget to talk about how this system was set up anyway according to for former congressman james Trafficon, rest in peace u.s bankruptcy speech shout out to Todd Bay. he always mentions him the united states corporation and all its subsidiary agencies have been dissolved and are operating in name only. The Secretary of Treasury is operating in name only. That's why the IRS is able to act on behalf. Employees who work at behalf of the IRS because it's operating in name only. <laughs> the color of authority and the color of law presented in this bogus IRS letter demonstrates a lack of reality. The Internal Revenue Service agents in general comprise of foreign hybrid Europeans impostering as the Amaru Khan al Marakan Americans connected to a cobweb of devils. Hashatan's global minions that range from but not limited to the Circle Church Crown and Chancery, including those Crown Templars, which, you know, this is this is your bar people, bar flies like thirteen put it, you know, uh, these these barristers. How are you gonna be? A, how are you gonna be associated with the British Credit Registry, but then you're working for the U.S. You're 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 working as a, a government official and for the, how you don't see the conflict of interest anyway international monetary fund this is your these the people who talk about oh the deep state oh the world economic forum and and all this you know they say that you're gonna own nothing and be happy yeah this is this is who you're talking about your global banking cartel the federal reserve which has, it's not federal at all, actually. It's not government at all, actually. Et Elia, Et Elia is Latin for and others. According to Pope Francis, Civil Orders 2014, all of these agents of Hasatan are Roman Curia members, which is why I sent this letter as a courtesy copy to Archbishop of the Tampa St. Pete Territory, Florida, um, Gregory L. Parks. The beast system going to and fro the earth, devouring nations foretold by my forefather, Prophet Daniel, and other Israelite prophets. Hasatan beast system curseth the unsuspecting people with the mark of the beast that coerced them with satanic based adhesion contracts where you can't buy or sell without the mark of the beast. <laughs> 13th son he used to pronounce beast like that beast i can't talk too loud because it's pretty early where i'm at internal revenue service 
generated tax ID numbers. Before I continue, I want to share this. This is Public Law 97-280, uh, published October the 4th, 1982, um, during Ronald Reagan administration. All right, this is important because this clarifies that um, the Bible can be used to administer uh, United States government law because that's the root of it. That's why uh, Noble Jirali, Prophet Noble Jirali, had stated, Moors, do not throw away your Bibles. Or people of America, Amorukans, don't throw away your Bibles because I will use them to condemn this government. Whereas the Bible, the Word of God, has made a unique contribution in shaping the United States as a distinctive and barut nation and people. Whereas deeply held religious convictions springing from the Holy Scriptures led to the early settlement of our nation. Whereas biblical teachings inspired concepts of civil government that are contained in our Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. Go look this up. Start condemning this motherfucking government with the scripture. But you can't, you have to be set apart, of course. I'm not acting like I'm holier than thou. But I'm, I'm damn sure not one of their subject Negro citizens. Never. Anyway. I'm definitely trying to be set apart so that I can condemn this fucking government. And be free. Forever. Amen. 1936 Webster's Universal Dictionary defines Americans as the original peoples who are the copper colored natives. Hasatan's children have been used to fulfill Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28 curses, as well as the, the things they gift for their genocidal acts of doing everything they can to bury the true heritage of the true Yahudim, children of the Most High, Elion Yahuwah Hashem. Now, the Jubilee is here, as well as Nibiru, Wormwood, and other cosmic, subterranean, intraterrestrial, extraterrestrial, angelic forces to the judgment of El Shaddai against those oppressive nations who pledged amongst themselves to become confederate against us, children of Yasharel, Yisrael, Psalms 83. All right. Now, Psalms 83. I read that. That real quick. All right. This is about a King James version. And we're going to also, we're going to reach this fifth verse 13 who is who 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 are the ones who are confederate against the all of these oppressive nations who work together to make sure that children of Yashrael are at the bottom. Well, guess what? The Messiah, Yahushua, Yahshua, those who are first shall be last. Those who are last shall be first. The head shall become the tail. The tail shall become the head, right? First world countries will be what? third world third world countries which always how is it that all the tropical beautiful places in the world heavenly places in the world are third world countries i had a, i have a homie shout out to my brother mike mike b he would ask me that like how come the caribbean and parts of central south america you know southeast asia how come they have all this corruption but places like europe and all that it's like so peaceful and what have you it's a good question first world countries will be third world third world will be first world i i ain't nobody be saying anything 
But I do know the Messiah said those who were first will be last. He, he, those who exalt themselves will be humble. Those who, who are humble will be exalted. So however way you want to say it, all of these precedents are now. Genesis 15 verse 13 through 14. Let's talk about it. Y'all can say what y'all want to say. King James Version. And he said unto Abram, Know of a shirt thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years and also that nation who they serve who they shall serve will i judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance you can say what you want to say this is rooted out of the apocalypse of abraham if only i can pull that up right now apocalypse of abraham i i think i can pull that up real quick matter of fact uh I have it. I already posted it. Um, Cause the book is very deceiving. They put that prophecy in the book of Genesis, something that happened already, when it's actually an end times prophecy. And we're gonna prove it real quick. And then I'm gonna close out with the letter. This is all very important to just put in base to show and prove that I am who I say I am. I am. I'm not one of your Negro citizens. I'm not your taxpayer, and I will never. Negro taxpayer. Fuck is you talking about? I tried so hard not to. <laughs> not to so call. All. Use profanity. But. These people got me fucked up, thinking they can call me their fucking. I see my internet acting slow. All right, so while it loads up, let me finish the letter, and then I'll get back to it. All right. Do not confuse me with those who call themselves Jews, Jewish, who are not. Pause. But are the Germanic, Slavic, Kazarian. Ash cannot see Zionist imposters, some of which are good people who descend from the Khazars who converted to Yahudim in the eighth century. I can never be a quote unquote taxpayer, a quote unquote US citizen, 14th Amendment contracting, surf citizen employee franchisee. 13th Amendment, Section 12. Let's talk about it. Got it right here. This is also on the flash drive. House of Great Waking New Mass, Dr. G. Holla at her to get yours. Over 20 years worth of research. Or you can go to the Library of Congress and, and, and order this yourself. This is the 13th Amendment, published Saturday, April 9th, 1864, Abraham Lincoln administration. 150 years ago, when all this bullshit happened, we're going to go to Section 12. And then we're going to zoom in and we're going to read it for the record. All right. Section 12. Can I highlight it? Nah, I can't. Yeah. All right. It's right here. Section 12. Follow the mouse. The traffic in slaves with Africa is hereby forever prohibited on pain of death and the forfeitures of all the rights and property of persons engaged therein. And the descendants of Africans shall not be citizens. Read them and weep. Checkmate. You, they, they try and hide the 13th Amendment. If you Google 13th Amendment, it won't show you Section 12. That's what this devil do. But guess what? We're in a time, age of Aquarius. No stone shall be left unturned. So whatever they do, ain't gonna work. Sorry. Just ain't gonna work. Alright, so here we go. This is to... Uh, uh, if I can find it. Here we go. You ready? Apocalypse of Abraham, chapter 32. This corresponds with Genesis 15, verse 13, verse 14, by showing and proving that this is an end times prophecy. All right, I, I, um, I, I have this hard copy, but I, I downloaded the PDF and I um, screenshotted it and I made this collage and I, I posted it on my Twitter page. For the record, you know, show and prove that uh shout out to big judah he's 
the one who I learned this from. I always just give credit where credit is due. Shout out to Sister Yaffa Bay, Raz Vriar Bay, uh, Asir Dukatir, Sabir Bay, uh, Abdullah, Abdullah Talib Mosi Bay, Shem Bay, so many bays and and just noble people. Get off my screen. All right. So I'm going to show this real quick. Okay. Get off my screen. Peep this. This is screenshotted from the PDF of. Uh, get off my screen. The Old Testament pseudo pseudepigraph for, I don't know how to pronounce that, Apocalypse Literature and Testaments. All right, this is basically the records of the Apocalypse of Abraham, okay, which was a book that was taken out of the original Helio Bibliotex or Holy Book of the Sun. Yep, that's what the Bible is from what I've learned. Don't ask me nothing. I know what I know so far, and I know that this devil is a liar and that they've taken books out of the Bible to try and hide prophecy, to try and control the narrative and this, I don't want to I don't really care I'm just going to show and prove that Genesis 15 verse 13 and 14 is actually a corresponding prophecy that traces to the apocalypse of Abraham that demonstrates that this prophecy is an end times prophecy which means it's something that's happening now because this is the end times so I know chapter 32 Apocalypse of Abraham. I already showed you where it's coming from. Quote, Therefore, hear, Ibrahim, and see, behold, your seventh generation shall go with you, and they will go out into an alien land, and they will enslave them and oppress them as for one hour of the impious age, but of the nation whom they shall serve, I am the judge, and the Adonai said this too. Have you heard, Abraham, what I have told you, what your tribe will encounter in the last days? Ibrahim, having heard, accepted the words of Yahweh in his heart. Check fucking mate. Now, let's finish the letter. I, Asa Seymour Bay, am a direct descendant of the tribe of Levi, Yehuda of the house of Yasharel, Israel. I am not black, African American, or civil or more tooth. Go look it up. It means civilly dead. In Latin, I am a flesh and blood sentient being, sentient divine being in full life, telling the truth while shaming the fucking devil. I had a sixth grade teacher who always used to say that. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Tell the truth and shame the devil. May the most high's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Selah. Pause. Ashe. 913. I'm fucking out. And I don't give a damn about these profanity. Fuck the devil. <laughs> 13. 